Melissa Etheridge and No Souvenir. And naast mij zit Kurt Smith van Tears for Fears. Kurt, Kurt, welcome. But where's Roland? He's uh, back there getting ready still. Getting ready, okay. Yeah. It's been a while, huh? Yeah, it's been a long time. But how, do, uh, how does it feel? It's nice, nice to be back. Um, it feels like releasing a first record again, which is good. I mean, the excitement's back in it again now. Mm -hmm. um, we needed to spend some time because I think we need to feel inspired yeah. to make records instead of just going in and, and treating it as a job. So yeah. it took us this long to be inspired, I think. So you're having fun? Yeah, yeah, at the <laughs> That's moment. That's great. Okay, about the album. Um, three producers, nine studios, <laughs> a million pounds, mm. and three years. Seth, yeah. Tell me about it. Well, I mean, that's actually elaborating on a lot of the truths, to be honest. I mean, it was in an interview, that was in an article which unfortunately wasn't done by me and Roland. This was someone else saying this is what it took. But um, just for us, we just wanted to keep doing it until we felt it was ready, until we felt it was good. And um, that's why it's taken so long. We weren't happy with it up until now. Was there any stress between the band or between you and Roland no, about making all, the album? No, not at all, really. I think this album has been relatively easy to make in it the was? end. Yeah, yeah. even though people make it sound like it wasn't because it took yeah. a long time. Yeah. But it's just because we needed to make it good. But why three years? It's a long time. I mean, yeah. people get a lot, they start expecting things. Yeah, well, we took, we took time off. Uh -huh. uh, Roland did a, lo a lot of writing. Um, we started in the studio initially, um, ended up spending a while Doing, going through the same motions as we did in the last record and, uh -huh. and, and realized we didn't particularly like the result at the end of the day, or at least it wasn't new enough uh -huh. for us. So um, we just restarted and um, it's been quite easy going since then. Wow, so they said the project got abandoned a couple of times, is that true? Well, yeah, I suppose technically it's true, but for us it, it was just um, unlearning old methods so we could do something new. It was no traumatic time, I don't think. I think it was relatively easy going, but so yeah, fun. we did scrap a qu quite a lot of stuff. So it was a lot of fun mm. doing it. Yeah. That's great. Phil Collins, is, was he involved? Yeah, well, he played drums on one track. Yeah, We tried to use a lot of musicians on this album, a lot of different musicians, because mm -hmm. we felt the album in its material was quite diverse. Yeah. So it required a lot of different musicians per track, because we want to use the right musician for the right track. Oh, great. Hey, let's go do the top 10. Sure. You want to help me out? Yep, I'll do it for you if you want. You want to do it? Sure. Okay. So, start at number 10, uh, Double Trouble and Just Keep Rocking. Uh -huh. Number 9, Kaoma and Lambada. Number 8, Tina Turner, The Best. Number 7, Redhead Kingpin and FBI and Do the Right Thing. Number 6, Millie Vanilli, Blame It on the Rain. Number 5, Diana Ross and the Supremes with Reflections. Number four, The Mix, Dance Classics. Number three, Margaret Singana and We Are Growing. Number two, Lil Louie, French Kiss. And number one, soon to be replaced by us, uh, Jive Bunny and the Master Mixers and Swing the Mood. Kurt, thank you very much. Um, we'll see you later on stage, but before you go, what do you think of Redhead Kingpin? It's good, I like it. You like it? Okay, structure number one, my new ears number Hello. I'm Phil Collins, and you're watching Europe's number one rock show, Countdown.